still <laughs> December 16th. Um, so, so one of the things that I was, um, thinking about on the way home today was, was just this continued reflecting on, on, on MJ's message this morning about, um, you know, what I'm, what I'm preparing to do and, and how you can, um, help heal others, right? Once you work on your Chiron. And I was, I was sitting with it, sitting with it, and, and I think I had said that my Chiron's in the seventh house. It's not in the seventh house. It's in the eighth house. It's in the eighth house. I don't, and then I was thinking, like, why did I think it was in the seventh house? Like, this whole time I'm thinking about loss, right? Loss, loss of, of relationships. That's why. Um, because the seventh house is about relationships. It's about partnership, about marriage. And it's like this theme that I'm going through in terms of potential partners, right? Or, or even like dating, like there's this continued theme of loss with one person after the other, after the other, after the other. And, and so I, that's why I thought it was in the seventh house, but it's not, and it's in the eighth house. Taurus, it's also in Taurus. Taurus is about loss, the wound of loss. So, and that's in, loss in all areas of my life. Loss of relationships, loss of resources, loss of, um, you know, anything that makes you stable, right? Because Taurus is, is grounded, it's stability. And so my Chiron's there. So that means I, I'm, I need to be comfortable, right? I need to work on being comfortable with loss. Um, it just so happens, so, so loss of any kind, hence the relationships. But the fact that it's in the eighth house, it's different. So I looked up that one video where I was starting to tap into my Chiron, right? What I read in the video was only the eighth house, not the fact that the Chiron was in the eighth house. So I looked up Chiron in the eighth house. It says, this shows your deepest wound residing in resource, death, and sex. There are many different ways this placement can express itself. Materially, it can manifest through dependence on others and others depending on you too much. Hell yeah. In, uh, that's the codependency, the codependency, right? Um, physically, it can manifest through difficulties in feeling fulfilled sexually. Hell yeah. Um, yet being able to fulfill partners very easily. Emotionally, it can manifest in great sorrow regarding death. Possibly having debts in your early childhood or having those close to you die. I don't... <sighs> See, that... I'm trying to... I don't think I... I mean, I definitely suffered loss, but not people who are close to me. I mean, there was this continued theme of loss because I moved around. I moved around a lot. So there was loss of relationships in that sense of like... As it is, building relationships was difficult, let alone letting them go was difficult. Um, it says, you may be able to console those who f are feeling sorrow, but are unable to console yourself. Eh, I don't know about that anymore. <laughs> because clearly, this journey is documented. That could be like, it's okay, you be, it's okay. <laughs> um, whichever these are, the important thing to remember is to respect yourself, accept the cycles of life, and let go which is definitely something that's been a common theme through this whole process, right? You can heal each of these wounds by being honest and upfront. You must learn to share your emotions in order to transcend them, hence this platform. Um, you know transformation lurks behind disaster better than anyone. Clear the suit, embrace the change. Individuals with Chiron in the eighth house have experienced loss and tragedy, tragedy at an early age. These individuals may also have lived with very dramatic parents who turned the slightest incidents into a drama based on perspective, but for the most part, <laughs> these people see the dynamics. Oh, they are used to drama. Yes, I was around that a lot. And intense emotions, yes. Manipulation, yes. And power games, yes. These people see the dynamics at play in relationships because of this, they are expert in spotting manipulators. These people often say little, although they pick up on a lot of what is going on around them. Yes, I always felt like I was a fly on the wall. like you know, where no one really saw you, but you can see everything. Um, they see how some people pull each other's strings and they avoid being drawn into such scenarios. 
They do have compassion and understanding for the innocent, such as children caught up in this world one of destructive behavior. They gravitate towards working with such individuals, providing the much needed support they need to move on. So this might also be why adults who are children like, um, there's also this, this, you know, attraction of, of helping them, right? They often identify with the story of the young woman who was desired in marriage by a powerful young man. She collected her excrement and vomit and, and sent them in jars to him. The message being clear that this was what he desired when he desired her physically. There is, however, a deeper meaning in this, and that is true. And that is true love is seeing the beautiful in the excrement and vomit of her as part of who she is, and many may have felt that they have experienced this intense need to be accepted in totality yes in which they may be wounded by those who that cannot understand this need whether it is family or relationship yes totally like i there is this element of just wanting wanting to be seen right wanting to be accepted for who i am and so it says, with this aspect, there's a strong desire to own your own excrement, which is what I'm doing with this platform. <laughs> I'm, I'm owning my shit. <laughs> and, and speaking my truth, right? Um, as part of who you are and in a world where it magically vanishes down the toilet, this makes you at odds with society who cannot love you, love your excrement. It says who cannot love you, love your excrement, but who cannot even acknowledge that exists. Okay. Um, this possess poses a deep quandary quandary for the I know that one up for those whose excrement cannot be magically flushed away but stays with them they are on the outskirts of a society that demands something from them that is impossible to achieve for it is only an acceptance of their own excrement and where it originated from that they can move forward yet they are constantly being told to flush it away and let it magically disappear so this is when people tell others get over it get over it right is what I'm thinking um or or people who get stuck who can't who who find it hard to to move on this however makes them one of the few that can accept others in their entirety and understand that we all come with our own excrement that is as much a part of us as our physical form that we all suffer and in the intensity of the experience we find our true selves and an acceptance of death and the futility of the randomness of life we find purpose through our acceptance of our own excrement we find its beauty and worth and we can help others to find that beauty so that they can finally love their excrement and love themselves so i help other people love their <laughs> love themselves really in their entirety um so i thought that was really neat in in the sense of like it's showing like the potential challenges and i'm like oh, okay well that doesn't bother me as much anymore you know like there's this awareness of the healing that i've done right and then i continue to do because clearly i'm not done yet but it's definitely definitely not where it used to be not where it used to be <sighs> so i got a little nosy <laughs> and looked up other people's birth charts um, I snooped around a bit and and you know I'm glad I did because it makes sense I, I can understand them better I can it makes sense what I saw what I saw in them you know yeah yeah um and and because it's also with the energy of Taurus right it's going to be the, the loss and tragedy. It's going to be primarily around um, loss. With everything, really. Anything that makes you feel stable. So, back in the day, <laughs> like a year ago, um, when all this was going on, I was reminded. There's, there's a video, I think it was like right before I was thinking of going to, to Spain. And um, it was earlier, gosh, it seems like forever ago. It was earlier this year. And I remember it was when I was watching movies. 
<laughs> I think that was when I got Rocky Eye. <laughs> um, I watched, there was some, there, I had a poll, I had a poll to watch Audrey Hepburn, The Life of Audrey Hepburn. And, and I don't know if it was that night that I had a dream. I, that's part of my video diary. That I remember being so triggered by that bit movie in my dream. Just the movie itself. And then in the dream that I had where I was, um, it felt like I was a model, like I was being attended to. And, and it was a photo shoot. And I was very much like, like leaning back and everybody was just like attending to things around me. Like the, the little things. No, it wasn't a dream. It was a vision that I got um, when I was, um, but I got it after I watched the Audrey Hepburn the Audrey Hepburn um, movie. So in the movie, for those of you who haven't seen it, it talks about her life, her relationships, her partnerships. And there was this continued theme in her life about losing, like not being able to connect, not being able to um, kind of hold a relationship. There was a lot of loss around her life. And there was something about it that I remember just it was brought into tears. And I didn't know why. I mean, I've always had an attraction to Audrey Hepburn. When I was young, like, you know, Audrey Hepburn, Lucille Ball. There were all these, like, classic Hollywood, you know, um, individuals, right? Artists that I was drawn to. And, but for whatever reason, she stood out the most. I just, just, just what she, what she exuded, right? Her presence. And, um. But there were the other, the extreme, the other extreme of loss, it, the themes of loss in her life. So I decided to look her up, um, her birth chart, and um, she has her Chiron. Guess where? In Taurus. Chiron in Taurus. Um, and and it was the losses, the losses that I was like being tugged towards. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And now, so now I'm trying to think of all the other artists that, that I was being drawn to. But anyways, to see if there's a connection, right? Because even, even when I told my cousin about one of my dreams, the, the one with, with um, J-Lo in it, I was just like, the one where I was in the closet, I got myself out of the closet, and I was, being, I was getting ready to be interviewed. Um, and, and then, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting outside. <laughs> but... but <laughs> with j-lo i'm like what? and again i don't follow the news i don't follow um like celebrity like i don't i don't i'll, I'll scroll through my phone and something like but even when it comes up like i don't pay attention to it i just don't and so um unless it's like something my sister brings up or becomes to have a conversation i'm like okay we look into it a little bit more but it's just funny because in that dream i'm with j-lo but she's talking about the the nine to five like the, the, the work, the work, right? The nine to five. And I just remember thinking, okay, she's right next to me. And then the lady comes back and she's apologizing um, and saying they're not ready. But I already knew that they weren't ready. There was an element of like, I already know that they're not ready. And, and so she's just apologizing. And I make my way back into the closet. <laughs> it's like I come out of the closet and then I go back. And so there's this familiarity of being in the closet and I'm just working. I'm working in the closet. <laughs> I'm just like, doo, doo, doo. But I'm working. I'm doing my life, right? And and so so I mentioned it to my cousin and they tell me, they're like, Well, that makes sense if you're if your your north node is in Leo and in the tenth house, my life's work. So not only is it my life's work in the 10th house, because 10th house is the house of the career. But my north node is there. So it, I'm having to work towards embracing that energy of of work. And it's in Leo, of being seen. <laughs> um, being seen. And apparently, J-Lo is a Leo. I didn't know she was a Leo until my cousin told me. So there, I've had other dreams because I saw some of my journals. Like I've had dreams of Beyonce in the very beginning. Like I remember, I don't even follow Beyonce. I don't even like, I know maybe some of her songs, but I'm not a, like, a, sorry Beyonce. Just, I, I don't know a lot about the artists. <laughs> um, 
and there was always this element of like just let them live their lives right and, and so so that's one of the reasons why I don't really like follow them um but I remember I had a dream about Beyonce and I'm thinking like why why am I dreaming about Beyonce I don't even listen to her music like you know where I'm a loyal fan where she's always in my mind um so now I, I want to look up Beyonce's chart too and there were a few other actors that that now I'm curious I'm curious about their charts. So anyways, um, with this new revelation, <laughs> correction, I signed up. I signed up for um, the Understanding Your North Node class and the Chiron, the Wounded Healer, because I've been wanting to, one. Two, I have the means to. Three, I'm using it more in, in counseling. Like, I'm, I'm being, a, there's a, this fortunate, nice balance of a lot of people that I'm meeting and this is in alignment with what they already believe. So because it's already in alignment, I'm using the tool and, and you know, letting them know like, hey, I'm still a beginner at it, I'm learning. These are the ones that I'm focusing on. I'm really only trying to become more of an expert with the North Node and the Chiron um, and anything else. And, and maybe the, the third house and the seventh house. <laughs> Probably like the main ones. Relationships, for sure relationships. Only because, I was thinking about it, people who go to therapy, there's always an issue about relationships, interpersonal relationships, uh, intrapersonal conflict, right, within themselves, work, um, and then any childhood wounds. So the moon sign, maybe the moon sign too. Um, and so those are the ones that I'm kind of wanting to master a little more so that I can be of service and help others understand their chart in that aspect and then kind of refer them out until I get more comfortable with the other, um, the other signs. <sighs> so there's that. I'm having to postpone my trip about a week, a few days maybe, because uh, one of the littles is sick and, and there's a part of me that doesn't want to get, con you know, <laughs> get sick. And then two, I want to use this time excuse me, to, to just kind of fine tune these courses, what I need to do so there's a purpose as to why um, all of this is unfolding in the way that it is. Mm, my soup is getting ready. Um, and um, so I'm excited. I'm excited for these courses. They're shorter courses. I'm almost done with the business one. Great course, by the way. Yubi, and in case you haven't figured it out, this footage is capturing my experience as I learn to navigate my personal spiritual awakening. Um, I am learning that this experience is unique to each one of us um, in whatever way we believe we are embracing living our truth. This just happens to be my journey. Um, and despite me having a graduate degree and a license in clinical social work, this by no means is intended to replace any type of mental health advice. This is just me on a personal level, uh, documenting my experience, shedding light on the truth that I am learning and discovering for myself, um, and really inviting you along for the ride. Um, if by some <laughs> magical chance you find this content to be helpful in any way, shape, or form, please click the like button, you know, share the message, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account, a personal one, and one specifically for this channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Um, I'm an open book. Um, I have also created t-shirt, um, t-shirt designs. I'm wearing my favorite one right now, which is the North Node. Um, uh, design, um, but I have that and other things uh, that you can look at um, inspired by this process and journey um, and I have the link in the description box as well as in the about section of my YouTube um, channel. So you're more than welcome to check those items out. Um, any type of support is you know, great. <laughs> um, again, if, if you find this content really helpful or meaningful, sometimes when we um, take that step and, and vulnerable you know with with showing what's inside our hearts and what's really our truth we realize that we're much more connected um, than, than what we thought we were and so um, I hope that um, as I'm living this experience and, and that you find 
some type of truth for yourself or, or find some type of um, ability to heal in some way just by relating, you know, just just by knowing that you're not alone. That really has been my goal with, with this process, um, not just um, being able to connect with others, but really for my own healing. Um, it's definitely been a therapeutic experience and a very creative one for, for myself. So I thank you and um, I wish you all the best and you know, we'll see what else um, comes next for me.